some time and was able to take the uh, the motor apart. It was kind of a pain in the ass to get apart. Um, what you have, at least on this one, this is the rear end of the housing um, where your wires and everything are. You have the regular four bolts around the outside here that go all the way through to clamp both sides of the housing together. Then you have these two smaller screws right here and right here that have to come out too. Now what that holds is your start relay right here for your centrifugal switch. That's actually bolted to the rear of the housing. It's not bolted to the to the inside mount uh, like some of the other motors are. So and also um, the, these bearings in here they're press fit. They're press fit both on the shaft and into this slot. So um, it was kind of a pain in the ass to remove. I had a was able to get everything loose, slide it apart, and actually stick a screwdriver into the slot once I tapped one side out a little bit and able to pry it around and pop them out um, to get the rear out. And then also there are two screws on the inside of the rear housing right here and right here that hold the terminal block on. Um, that came out with the bearing still on the shaft and uh, the front one, the front part of the housing, I actually had to take a, a puller and grab the outside and pull it off to get the press fit out. I'm pretty sure that the noise that I heard was coming from the bearings themselves. So you can see inside the housing, you got about 50 years worth of grease in here. It has turned itself pretty much into the consistency of peanut butter. And the bearings themselves, right there. I mean, it spins. This, this is the rear bearing on the bottom. I could feel a little bit of, uh, not really grinding, it just feels a little tight as compared to the one on the front. And the other thing is, um, here's your shaft and rotor. They're press fit onto the shaft. Oops. Here's the one on the front still there. I haven't taken that one off yet. Here's the one on the back, but they're different sizes. Um, it's a three quarter shaft on the front bearing, but this one on the back is actually a little bit bigger. Um, just so you know, if you ever have to buy the bearings themselves. And I uh, was able just to get it off with the um, standard pulley puller. All right, here's your uh, centrifugal switch. What it is is in this position when the motor starts, or when the motor's in the standstill, once it gets up to a certain RPM, it'll actually snap in like that. And what that does is bears on this raised surface here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. What that's going to do is bear in on this surface here so that when that black plastic cap is down it holds pressure on this which is closing that little switch there and once it gets up to speed it'll snap that switch open and uh, pull out your start winding. Uh, you also want to make sure since you have it all apart that this is making good contact and that it's not built up with carbon. I'll probably just run a little bit of sand cloth through there because it's looking pretty black. Everything else is pretty good in it though. Um, all of the wires themselves, even though they are the old cloth covered wires, are all intact. There's uh, And all the insulation inside is intact. So I'm going to get to cleaning out these bearings and see if um, maybe if I repack them with some grease. It'll be a little bit better. If not, I will have to replace them and you know, I'll put uh, the part numbers and stuff that I use for it. Just a quick little update. Well, we're back to the motor again. I finally got those bearings in. As you can see, everything's been uh, painted. All I did was mask and paint it with some uh, gloss black spray paint. Worked out pretty good. Reason why it took so long to get the bearings is uh, they're felt shielded bearings, which I guess are getting pretty hard to find. Um, a lot of older motors and equipment use them, and also you'll You'll find them in cars and like uh, power steering pumps and stuff like that. And the older, uh, I know GM for a fact used them. Um, 
But what it is, and what's screwing you up, is this right here is a regular bearing, as a regular shielded bearing. As you can see, you know, it's it's the same size on either side. It is flat. These uh, felt shielded bearings, um, yeah, 8504 is the numbers on them. And um, what's kind of screwing you up is this raised portion on the back. Um, as you can see, here's the bearing surface um, with the carrier here, and here's your bore, which is flat on this side, but it's raised out on this side. Uh, that that that's what's screwing you out. Plus, I mean, you can still find these at automotive stores. They're usually like ancient, but they want 20 bucks a bearing. Um, is the cheapest I found locally. There was a company out in California that sells these for nine bucks a pop. That's what that's what took so long as get uh, to getting them. Um, as you can see. This one here is one of the old ones with the grease still packed in there, all nasty. This is one that I cleaned up. I thought maybe just the grease was holding it back and I could reuse it, but I don't know if you can hear it when I spin it. That little hiss. I didn't like the way that sounded compared to the new one here, which is perfectly silent. So uh, I'm just going to press these into the shaft here on either end and get it all back together again and then uh, we'll see how it comes together and how it sounds alright, get it all back together again spins nice and free um, I do have uh, it wired up temporarily just to a plug so I can try it um, there might be a little bit of noise until the bearings completely seat themselves and find their, uh, their level between them it's depending on what the other ones were, if there was any run out in these I might scrape the inside of the, uh, the housing a little bit on one side because I did no notice a wear mark on the on the rotor in there. So let's plug her in and see how she works. Ah, there you go. No noise whatsoever. Nice and quiet. Now all the weight on the stator is this way down. What you're gonna want to do is flip it up. That's the way it's gonna be sitting on the drill press. You can hear it change a little bit when I did that but I'm not hearing any grinding anything bad so we should be good to go put her on the drill press and get the rest of it together